So visceral fat, what is it? That's the fat that we store around our organs. That's actually very dangerous fat. So as we gain weight, unfortunately in our process specifically, and I'm gonna to get to that in another video, because of dietary changes of, of how we as a society are eating, we're eating a very high amount of omega-6 fatty acids, we're eating a very high carb diet. For a long time we've been told to eat low fat, and anyway, this was a very confusing thing, but anyway, we're, we're gaining weight, and it stores all over their body, but the dangerous part that we're mostly concerned about is the visceral fat. And that's also called central obesity or trunkal obesity, and that's the fat really that's around the waistline. So when you buy pants with the waistline increasing, you know, year by year, like an inch bigger here and there, that, that inch that you're gaining in your waist translates into quite a bit of visceral fat, maybe even several pounds of it. And why is that so bad? I mean, fat is always unsightly. The fat that we're mostly uh, cosmetically concerned about is the fat that's sitting, you know, right under the skin. You know, that we see, you know, the love handles on these things. Those are above the muscles. And that certainly is something that needs to be addressed as well. And when we lose weight, we lose that as well. But the more important fat is the deeper fat that sits around the organs. So again, visceral fat, and that is very inflammatory. So what does that mean? Inflammation is kind of a term that's sort of hard to understand, but it means um, if you think of your body as a car, uh, what is inflammation? Inflammation is your car is running low on oil. You haven't changed the oil in five years. There's sludge in there. You're running low on coolant, so the car is constantly overheating. You're missing a spark plug or a spark plug's not working, so you're not running on one cylinder. Running a uh, low octane gasoline and your tire pressures are low. So you have a car that's sluggish, it doesn't have any power, barely gets some A to B, and over time, there's very high risk due to overheating and other things that the engine will seize and, and, and stop working. That's inflammation. Inflammation is a horrible thing for the body. Inflammation is very, very damaging. We believe it is at the root of most uh, diseases that we know these days. Uh, blood pressure, cancer, autoimmune disorders, dementia are all linked to inflammatory processes. And a lot of this inflammation comes from the visceral fat around the organs. So losing weight is, you know, and I'm not really talking about losing weight, losing fat, that's really what's important. And um, the visceral fat, as that goes down, we become healthier again. It's a very interesting phenomenon. People feel better. It's like you just had a tune-up. You get your car serviced. You have new oil. You know, you get the spark plug replaced. Pumped up the tires. You have better gasoline in there. You know, you did a tune-up, and all of a sudden, that car is running great again. That's the whole idea behind it. So. Um, what are some of the inflammatory components that we look at when we do a blood panel? There's, I mean, it's IL-6, C-reactive protein, tumor necrosis factor alpha, all these are factors that we can trace. And again, uh, at the very beginning of all disease. So when we lose weight, uh, when we lose fat more specifically, we feel better. How do you so how do we lose that fat? In order to keep this video short, I'm just gonna give you three easy things to start losing fat. Number one, decrease your intake of carbohydrates. We have been primed for, for many, many years to do a low-fat, high-carb, complex-carb diet, and that is not working very well. I'm going to talk in a bit more detail about that. Um, the carbohydrate content has to come down, and you'll see actually health-wise what response usually is here to your triglycerides, which is one of the bad markers in your cholesterol, will then also go down, and you're going to become healthier. Carbohydrates, unfortunately, uh, trigger uh, fat production, specifically seen in the triglyceride content, and it is a very inflammatory diet, and we're gonna to try to change that a bit. So decreased carbohydrates means cut out, you know, bread, pasta, rice, potatoes, um, also fruit. Yeah, fruit sounds healthy, but fructose, the sugar in fruit, unfortunately is not. So while fruit has a lot of good components in it, the vitamins, minerals, etc., the fructose is a problem. If you eat fruit, try to eat fruit with a lower glycemic content. That could be, for example, blueberries and raspberries, but I'll talk about that in some other video. For now, maybe just one piece of food a day, so just keep that in mind. So low carbohydrate and uh, not too much fruit, right? No fruit juices, important as well. Those are very much hidden sources of sugars and carbs. Of course, no simple sugars, you know, like the candy pastries and all that. Those are, they, they don't do you any favors. Number two, eat healthy fats. Yep, you heard that right, healthy fats. The problem is that people eat a lot of fats and our diet is very rich in omega-6 fatty acids from seed oils or vegetable oils. They call them vegetable oils, but they're really seed oils and they're also called polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs. Those are terrible for your health. 
highly inflammatory and we need to decrease those. Unfortunately, they make up almost 60% of our daily intake, which is horrible, not good. So which fats should you use? To keep it simple, I'm just giving you four of the fats that I think are very good to use. And then uh, in another video, we'll dive more into that. Simple, butter. Ideally, you get it, you know, from um, places, you know, where you have organically um, grown grass and you have free range cattle and all those things. Secondly, coconut oil. Yes, high in uh, saturated fats, but a very healthy oil. And don't worry about saturated fat. I'll talk about that another time as well. Avocado oil. And then of course, for your salads, olive oil. I wouldn't cook with olive oil. There's some issues with, uh, it, it denatures a bit more when you heat it. But so again, for simplicity, butter, coconut oil, avocado oil, and then olive oil. Those are the fats that are, are generally okay. The ones to avoid are soybean oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, and all those synthetic oils, kick them out. And you'll find when you buy things at the supermarket, then everything. So just you know, salad dressings, everything is it, mayonnaise. So if you buy mayonnaise, if you buy salad dressings, you can buy it with uh, made with avocado oil. It's a bit more expensive, but much healthier and it's much better fed for your body. Number three, the last meal of the day, so your dinner should have no carbohydrates at all. So that means no pasta, rice, potatoes, no a fruit, nothing that is a sugar or a carb. Try to keep it as lean as possible in that. Healthy fats at night, a lot of greens, you know, salads, uh, green vegetables, those are all fine. And then if you eat meat, those are absolutely fine as well. And again, prepare the meats with the oils we've just discussed. So uh, beef, chicken, fish, these are all certainly fine to eat. Ideally, um, you know, free range, uh, organically grown uh, produce, of course, and that makes a big difference. Now, when you do that at night, the reason for this is if I don't eat carbs at night, um, as soon as my body runs out of the energy that I've had in my last meal, I need to continue to produce energy overnight. My cells have an energy demand. What does your body do? It starts burning fat. That's the next thing that's available. And if you don't give your body carbohydrates at night, within about five to six hours, you start burning fat. That, those are the stores, the visceral fat, superficial fat. Those are great sources for the body to burn off and produce energy. So there's automatic fat, fat loss overnight. If you eat carbohydrates at night, before you go in that fat burning, win, burning window can take a lot longer. So this could take about 10 to 12 hours. So cutting out carbs at night gives you a much better window for burning fat. And then if you extend the time between your dinner and your first meals a day to about 14 to 16 hours, then you have a very, very good intermittent fasting window in which you will burn a lot of body fat. So again, three easy steps that you can start today to start losing fat, visceral fat, superficial fat, all the fat you don't want will come off slowly. Do it in, uh, you know, in a way that you eat healthy foods, um, try to get organic if you can. And then of course, you know, uh, make sure that they're high quality foods, grass fat and all that if you eat uh, meats. So hope this helps and we're gonna dive into that a bit more in other videos, thank you.